Welcome everybody to um, the BioPharma webinar for this afternoon. Um, my name is Sue Sneman and I'm the BioPharma coordinator for Eastern and Southern Africa. I'm going to start off the webinar just by giving a brief overview of BioPharma just for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to hand over to Jessica Stewart from UNEF WCMC who's going to talk to you in more detail about the world database of protected areas. The BioPharma is an initiative of the African, Caribbean and Pacific group of states and it's financed by the European Union's 11th European Development Fund. There are two main implementing partners, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, which um, is one of the main partners because of the global protected areas and biodiversity expertise, and then the Joint Research Center of the European Commission in Italy, and that is because of their scientific, technical and data expertise, so to try and combine the data and the biodiversity um, into the program to provide um, decision makers and stakeholders with better data for decision making. So the program covers the Africa, Caribbean and Pacific countries, 79 of them in total, um, where there are 35 biodiversity hotspots, more than 3 billion people and over 9,000 protected areas. So there are essentially four regional programs, one in the Caribbean, one covering Central and Western Africa, one covering Eastern and Southern Africa, and then the Pacific as well. So the overall objective of BioPharma is to contribute to improving the long-term conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity and natural resources in protected areas and surrounding communities through better use and monitoring of information and capacity development on management and governance. So the key things here are that it covers conserved and protected areas, including community conserved areas. And it's all about the use and monitoring of information and data and then capacity development around that. And so that's why the WPPA and the information and the data that goes into that is an important part of BioPharma. Excuse my dogs in the background, I apologize. <laughs> um, so the overall mission is to reinforce management and governance of protected and conserved areas. And so um, you can follow the, the chart here. It's about having objectives and then filtering relevant data and then filling data gaps and producing information. So that's where the information on the WDPA is so important um, because it is about filling the data gaps and understanding the protected and conserved areas. So how we do this is through three main um, pillars. Um, the first one is the reference information system, which is a global system. And then we also have regional reference information systems. And then also at a regional level, the regional observatories. In Eastern Southern Africa, ours is called the Regional Resource Hub, and they all have different names. But essentially, they are a one-stop shop um, for conservation and protected area data. And they are also the support institutions at a regional level supporting WCMC and collecting and collating and cleaning the data for the WDPA. And then there are the action grants, which are grants that are for specific actions and tangible actions on the ground to address priority needs, which are identified through the data collected and the gaps that are identified in the data. So it's about providing unique and tailored support to protected area authorities um, in terms of addressing their priorities. So that's all from me, but please do join us on Yammer if you're not already on Yammer, yammer.com forward slash BioPharma. And the two websites there on the screen where they, um, you can find the regional reference information systems and also general information on BioPharma. Um, I'm going to hand over to Jess now to give you more information <coughs> on the WDPA. Thank you, Sue. So can you see my screen properly? Perfect, thank you. Yeah, okay, excellent. Uh, so yeah, my name is Jessica Stewart and I work for UNEP WCMC, which is an organization that's based in Cambridge in the UK. And UNEP WCMC work with the BioPharma implementing organizations. And as part of this workflow, we work together to bring data into Protected Planet and the World Database on Protected Areas. So what I want to talk about today is how you can submit your national data to Protected Planet through this workflow that we have in BioPharma. So this year is a big year, uh, 2020, lots of targets end, and I want to explain to you how Protected Planet plays a role in tracking progress towards these different targets. So I'll just be talking for no more than 20 minutes on this, and there'll be time for questions at the end. So Protected Planet 
is a broader initiative that encompasses a few different databases. So the first database is the World Database on Protected Areas, which most of you are familiar with. And this database has been around for 60 years and is the global authoritative database on protected areas. The second database we've got under the Protected Planet Initiative is a much more recent database. And this is the World Database on other effective area-based conservation measures. So I'm not gonna go into detail about what OECMs are, but they were defined at the end of 2018 in line with AICHI Target 11. So we've started to collate this data at the end of 2019, and we'll continue to do so. And these two databases will be used together to track global and national progress towards different targets, specifically AICHI Target 11. And then the third database we've got is the Global Database on Protected Area Management Effectiveness, known as the GD Palme. <clears throat> and this database pulls together information on whether a protected area has been assessed using a management effectiveness evaluation. So it will say why, uh, when it's been assessed and through which methodology. And this links really nicely to the other two databases which have the information on the protected or conserved areas. So why is Protected Planet important? So as I've mentioned, Protected Planet is used to track progress towards different targets. So for the CBD's IG target 11, the data that's in Protected Planet is used and we create statistics um, on protected area coverage. It's also used in many indicators um, and other targets such as SDGs. So, um, the World Database on Protected Areas and the other databases that fall within Protected Planet are all used by multiple sectors, not just the conservation community, but the private sector, academia, etc. And it's re relied upon heavily um, in many, many of the sectors. So globally, it's important, as I said before, with the targets that we've set. So if we're talking about IHG Target 11, at the moment, the database shows that we have 7.9% coverage of marine protected areas. Now, we know with IG Target 11 that the target is 10%. So what we want to do is try and see if there's any protected areas that have not been submitted to the database that can help us achieve the 10% coverage of marine protected areas. And then in the terrestrial realm, we have 15.1% coverage at the moment, and this is using the February version of the WDPA. So again, let's see if we've got protected areas out there that aren't yet in the database that can push us up to the 17% target that we've got. So those are the global statistics that are created. And then on a regional scale, the database can be used also to compare countries within a region, or they can be used to compare two different regions. So um, we have data from all of these countries uh, within the Bioparma regions and then some of the countries that are also not included in Bioparma. And a recent example of the work that is done using the WDPA are the Bioparma State of Protected and Conserved Area reports that are undergoing at the moment in most of the Bioparma regions. So they're all using uh, Protected Planet as the authoritative data source. And the reason this is also um, a beneficial resource beyond a national data set is because it has the designations that are um, designated at the regional and the international scale. So an example of regional um, protected areas are, in Europe we have Natura 2000 sites, so they're designated at a regional scale. And then we've got international ones such as World Heritage Sites and UNESCO Manor Biosphere Reserves. So in the in protected planet databases, we have all of those different regional, national and international designations. And then finally, at the national scale, it's important. So this is a snapshot of Tanzania in the WDPA, so on protected planet. So when you submit data um, on a country, this is the summary statistics that is pumped out. So all the data is accessible. It's to, accessible to view and also to download. And the reason that this is beneficial in many ways is because a lot of countries don't 
actually have one national data set. They'll have lots of different data sets um, that are managed by different managing authorities of the protected areas. So for instance, Tanzania has four different data providers and four different data sets. So we pull all of this together and create the national statistics that you see here. So as you can see, at the moment for Tanzania, their coverage on land is 38.24% and the marine coverage is 3.02%. And whenever there's updates to the data, then these figures will also be recalculated. And the final thing that we do on these country pages is we link to protected area management effectiveness. So as I said, the databases that underlie uh, Protected Planet Initiative are all connected. So here we can see that 175 um, of the protected areas have a management effectiveness evaluation. And then below the percentage coverage, we have what area this, uh, what percentage of the area is covered by a management effectiveness evaluation. So we pull all the right information together um, to have as a national resource as well. So I've given a little bit of an overview of why Protected Planet is important and uh, how we show the data online. And I think it's important to also know who's involved in updating this data. So through the BioPharma program, there's quite a number of partners involved. So I'm just going to go through um, and give you a brief overview of who's involved in which region, and then you'll know who to get in contact with if you need to provide any data. So we have Central and West Africa, Eastern and Southern Africa, We've got the Pacific and the Caribbean. So firstly, Central and Western Africa, we've got a number of partners here, but we have um, from UNEP WCMC, we've got Marine and Claire, and from IUCN, we've got Tanya. And they work with all of these other organizations to pull the data together, process it, and have it made available on Protected Planet. And then Eastern and Southern Africa, so this is the region that I work in. So we've got me from UNEP WCMC, we've got Patrick from RCMRD, and Beryl from IUCN. And then Caribbean region, we have Christina and Ed from UNEP WCMC. We've got Julian from IUCN, and they work closely with the University of the West Indies in order to get all these data up to date for the Caribbean region. And then finally, we've got the Pacific. So we've got Heather from UNEP WCMC, we've got Vi from SPREP, and we've got Paul from IUCN. So these just put some faces and names to the people that you'll be contacting if you need to update the data in any of these biopharma regions. So you know who to contact, but what do you need to give us in order for us to update the data of Protective Planet? So what, what data is required? So firstly, we need to have GIS data. So this can be shapefiles most commonly or geodatabases, whichever GIS format you work in. And they can be point format or polygon. And this needs to be accompanied by some tabular information. So some basic key information about the protected area. So this is just a little screenshot of the tabular data that we gather. And you don't have to look at all the values here because there's a lot. But this is just a screenshot from our data manual, and it's a really useful resource when you're providing data to understand what values are allowed in each field. So for some fields, we have to have certain accepted values. And others, you can do free text. So I'll just give a couple of examples. So we have designation type here as a field. And the allowed values are national, regional, international, or not applicable. And this lines up with the national, regional, and international sites that I've been discussing earlier when talking about um, the regional relevance of protected planet. And then the name field, that can be whatever the name of the protected area is. So we can't put any constraints on this field in terms of what kind of words are put in here. If you want to know more details, there is a link on here to the Protected Planet user manual and you can really get down to the nitty gritty of what's allowed in the WDPA versus what's not allowed and whether you need to follow some accepted values. So it's a, it's a really useful resource. 
So we try to get, gather together as much of this information because we then want to have it displayed online, such as this example. So this is an example of a protected area in South Africa called Karoo National Park. So you can see here that the GIS data that we gather is then displayed online. So you can see the boundary of the protected area. And you can also see the information that we've gathered. So for instance, we look for a reported area of the protected area. So we put this in kilometers squared, but you can give us the data in whichever measurement that you like and we can convert it. We also need the designation of the protected area. So in this case, this is a national park, but it could be a nature reserve, forest reserve, etc. We also want to know the status of the protected area. So is it designated or is it proposed? Both go into the database. It's just good to know um, the status of it. And then also, when was the protected area designated? So this was designated back in 1979 as a national park. And then the governance type, which is a very important field, and it's one of the fields that we need accepted values for. So by that, I mean, we have certain values that can go into this field, and the values are um, the IUCN governance types. So if you give us some data and you've written in free text a type of governance that doesn't fit in with the IUCN governance types, we will ask you to try and fit um, your governance type in with the most appropriate IUCN governance. And the reason we do that is so that data are comparable um, across the world and within the countries. And the management authority. So the management authority for this protected area is South African National Parks. And we know that sometimes there isn't always a management plan for the protected area, but is, if there is a management plan, we do ask if there's an online URL, whether you can provide that so users can find the management plan through this page. We also link again to the management effectiveness evaluations that I mentioned earlier. So this is directly linked to the global database on protected area management effectiveness. And you can see that this protected area was assessed by a MET assessment in 2010, 2012 and 2013. And it was also assessed by a BirdLife IBA assessment in 2007. And then the final bit of information is the data provider. So we want the users of the of protected planet to know where this data has come from and for us to be transparent with the source of the data. So this is how that if you're having a back and forth with us about the data that goes into the WDPA, this is what it will look like in the end when you search for your protected area. So that's the data um, and what kind of data needs to come in and how it's visualized on protected planet. So now we just need to work out how the data processed. When you send it to us, how does it go from those tables into um, the online protected planet? So in this process, we do a lot of quality checking and going back to the data provider. And this can take a number of days, weeks, or months, depending on, depending on the data. And what we're checking for is to make sure that, let's say, for instance, a governance type has been entered that doesn't fit in with the IUCN governance types. We'll go back to the data provider. We'll check that there's a reported area that they have given a management authority. We'll double check that there aren't duplicates of the same site, for instance. And once we've done all this data processing, along with the other Biopharma partners, we'll format it so it's ready to go straight onto Protected Planet as soon as the next monthly update is ready. So we update the protected planet every month with the latest changes. So hopefully people are wondering how they can get involved. So if you um, have an official, official national data set of protected areas and want to send it to UNEP WCMC and the Biopharma partners, then do please feel free to email the following people. So there's a number of different people you can email and email any of these and you'll get a response. So your Biopharma Regional Resource Hub focal point. So that depends on which region you're in and you can go back a few slides and see which one is your focal point for your region. 
the UNEP WCMC regional focal point. So for Eastern and Southern Africa, the focal point is me, and it's different across the other regions. And then finally, protected areas at UNEPWCMC.org. If in doubt, email this email address and they'll put you in touch with the correct person, whether it's at UNEPWCMC or one of the other Bioparma partners. And when should you get involved? So our big aim is to have the data fully up to date um, across the globe, not just in the Bioparma regions, but by um, the CBD COP in October 2020. So we know that the United Nations Decade on Biodiversity is coming to an end, and the CBD and others are going to be using Protected Planet as the authoritative source for protected area coverage. So we really need to make sure that we're best representing countries. So in order to do that, we encourage all countries to send us whatever data they have so we can process it. So the July version of the WDPA is going to be used um, at the CBD COP to, um, in October. It's also going to be used for the Protected Planet Report, which I'm not sure if you've heard of, but the Protected Planet Report um, is now an online digital report that's updated regularly, but the final statistics will be the July version for each target. 11. So in order to do this, we need to have data to us by the 31st of May 2020. And the reason we need it that early is because, as I mentioned before, we need to go through the quality check and the data formatting uh, with the data provider. And sometimes this can take a number of weeks to make sure that the data are all formatted and ready for protected planet. So who should get involved? So this is a Bioparma focused webinar, so if you are from a Bioparma country, then please do get in touch with any of the people from those regions. And even if you're not a Bioparma country, that is totally fine. Please get in touch with us with any data you have and email us at protectedareas at unepwcmc.org. The goal really is to update all of the countries by the CBD COP in October. So if anyone can help, and anyone has data, then please do feel free to get in touch and we'll put you in touch with the correct person. So thank you for listening. I hope it's been useful. Um, if you have any questions now, please let me know, but otherwise my email address and the protected areas email address are up on the screen for you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jess. Um, yeah, I think the key points to take away from here are the importance of this year in terms of updating the data and ensuring that your country's data is as up to date as possible in terms of the new indicators that are going to be um, put in place um, in terms of assessments, reports. It's not only the CBD that uses the WDPA data, but it really is um, important from a national, regional and global perspective to ensure that country's data is up to date. Um, Ada Demola, are there any? Do you have any questions at the moment? Otherwise, you can feel free to contact Jess or anyone else at WCMC. Nothing at the moment. Well, um, yeah, we will be sharing this on the Yammer platform as well as the Bioparma website. And um, yeah, please do get in touch if you have any queries. But thank you very much, Jess, for pre presenting on the WDPA. No worries. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Thanks, Adam Waller. Thanks, bye.